Now let's review a general scenario for preparation and placement of the rubber dam. First you must mark the holes to be punched in the dam. This can be done with a pen and template manually or with a pattern stamp as shown. Marking holes ensures that the proper number of holes are punched in the dam and makes it easier to keep proper arch form. Prior to punching the holes, remember to check for bridges, missing teeth, and malaligned teeth in the quadrant to be isolated. Depending on the teeth to be isolated, you must then choose which size hole or holes to punch in the rubber dam using the rubber dam punch. For final preparation of the rubber dam, if desired, rubber dam lubricant may be placed on the perforated area of the rubber dam. The lubricant facilitates placement of the dam over the teeth as well as inversion of the dam around the teeth that have been isolated. Once you have selected the proper clamp, secure a sufficiently long piece of floss to both sides of the clamp. A minimum of six to eight inches of floss should hang from the clamp when it is properly secured. The floss acts as a retrieval mechanism if the clamp should slip from the tooth or break apart and obstruct the patient's airway. It is imperative that both sides of the clamp are secured with floss. In the event of clamp breakage in the mouth, either side of the clamp could cause an airway obstruction in the patient. Now you are ready to engage the clamp with the rubber dam forceps. The clamp can be secured to the tooth in one of two ways. It can be placed on the tooth prior to rubber dam placement, in which case the rubber dam is stretched over the clamp, or it can be placed simultaneously with the rubber dam, in which case the clamp is placed in the rubber dam prior to them both being brought to the mouth. Either method is fine as long as the clamp has been securely tied with floss.